Today's episode of Crystal Uncorked is all about how I stay organized so I can be super productive in my business and my life without working a million hours a week. And, uh, you know, I recently had a friend ask me about this. How do you stay organized? And as I was sharing some of my tips to her, I was like, this might be a good podcast. So I can't wait to share this with you today. And uh, let's dive in. Hello, I'm Crystal Vilkaitis. I'm a curious, wine-loving entrepreneur who loves to learn and have open and honest conversations. Join me and my amazing guests as we talk about all sorts of relatable business and life stuff. It's my goal that you'll have fun, learn something new, and get inspired. Wine is not required, but is recommended. This is Crystal Uncorked. Okay, so what I'm drinking today? Water. I am hydrating because part of what I'm going to talk about today is time blocking. So blocking uh, time in your schedule to knock out a bunch of projects or knock out a bunch of things. And for me, I needed to block out a bunch of recording. And that is this episode. I had to do an intro episode for a guest. I have a Crystal and Corked interview in an hour and a half with Rusty, who's one of our retailers. And I will be sharing some wine with Rusty. So um, I really needed to just make sure that I'm focusing and time blocking to get these done. So that is going to be part of my tip today, but I'm just drinking good old water from my refrigerator. (laughs) Okay. Really fancy here today. Um, on crystal uncorked, but I love it because I re I did an episode and I had coffee and I posted about that, that conflict I had of like, it's supposed to be wine and and talking about open and honest conversations. And, but I, I just had to have coffee that day. And on Instagram, so people are like, girl, it's your show. You get to do what you want. So, um, I loved that response. So yeah, right now, today we got some water, wine in a little bit. Okay. So let's talk about how I've organized my time. So I have more freedom and time freedom in my schedule. I think that's something that a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with and are trying to find. And even people who are not entrepreneurs, but maybe you have a busy life. Maybe you have kids. Maybe there's just a lot of moving pieces. So, um, you know, I was listening to a podcast just yesterday of this girl who's an entrepreneur and she was talking about how she wakes up at 5 a.m goes to bed at 11, is working basically that entire time. And um, she has a very successful business. She's six years in, but she's like, I just have no time. And I, that's really something that I need to focus on next. You know, making a lot of money can be a form of success for people. We all have different forms of what we would consider successful, right? And different levels of success. And I think for me personally, having time freedom is part of being successful. I need some flexibility within my schedule. I really like to travel, um, you know, back when we got to do that more often, but it's coming soon. And so I need that ability to be able to do that. And I also just like that time and space in my schedule to think, which I talked to on a previous episode. So um, how I've achieved this, this has been a process for sure. But one of the things has that I just started this year for my business is I created kind of this like 2021 manifesto. It doesn't really have a name. What I've been calling it is just what and why, the what and why doc. And in December, I wrote out what were going to achieve and why we want to achieve it. And so on this what and why it definitely had metrics of where I wanted us to be as a business from a membership standpoint, how many members I want us to be at, get listed clients, add clients, how many email addresses, um, you know, some of those easy to, to track staples that are really tied to a revenue goal. But I had other goals in there too, of us really increasing our exposure and engagement and doing that through press and social media and getting on other people's podcasts and booking more stages, which we're starting to do again. Thankfully, I cannot wait to be in person speaking. It's coming soon. 
And so, um, you know, bigger picture, working more with our affiliate partners and helping grow that channel, um, getting more affiliates for ourselves as well as really helping support our affiliates. So, um, and then there are things that I wanted to add to our membership to make membership easier and better and create better experiences for our insider members. And so I had all the what's, why we're, we want these things. And, and some of the whys of like being at a certain level was so we could hire somebody to then be a full time community manager. You know, so we needed to hit this level in order to bring on somebody who's full time versus having a few people help out with community management. Um, I want a dedicated person for that. So if we need it, we need to be at a certain membership level. So created that what and why doc and then had a company meeting where I just went over the what and why with my entire team. I'm very transparent with my team. We are open and share everything. And I sent that doc ahead of time so they can kind of review, see if there were questions. And then we went through it. Um, that way, the reason for that is we're all rowing in the same direction and we know where we're going, right? We know what we want to achieve, why we want to achieve it. And then the next piece is going to be, okay, who's getting this done, right? So um, there's a fabulous book called Who Not How by Dan Sullivan. And I strongly recommend it. We will link to it in this show. Um, But it's all about who on your team or contractors, experts, other people who can get the job done, not how do I do this job? right? Because that's where a lot of the time can get spent is you're trying to figure out how to do something. You know, you need to run Facebook ads and you're like, okay, so you go into ads manager and you're trying to figure out how do you set up an ad? Well, what objective should I choose? What audience, what creative, how do I even know if I'm successful? And you've spent hours and hours and hours trying to figure this out when you could have hired somebody to do that for you and you spend your time more in your zone of genius, doing the things that light you up that are within your strengths. We talked about strengths finder on a previous episode, you know, really doing those things that you're good at and then having other who's do the stuff that they're good at. You don't need to learn everything and do it all. Now, of course, when you're starting a brand new business, you don't really have the luxury of outsourcing everything because you often don't have a budget. So you do have to figure out the hows and I really do believe that everything is figure outable. You can learn. There's so much information online to help guide you and teach you whatever you need to figure out. But there comes a point where you're, it's going to be worth the investment in a person, whether you're outsourcing or hiring an employee or whatever that is to do this work for you. And they'll probably do it faster than you, better than you, and you've saved yourself some time. So you take this what and why doc And then you give it to somebody who is in charge, which mine is Pauline, who is my integrator. She'll be on a upcoming episode. So be on the lookout for that because a lot of people were requesting my integrator to be on the show. So cannot wait to bring her on and, um, and share all the juicy details. Uh, so I gave that document to my integrator, Pauline, and it's her job to then say, okay, who are the who's that are going to execute this? Now, of course, some of this it does require my time, right? It's not my entire team is going to do all of that. There are things that they're going to need from me. I just need them to let me know what they need from me. So I'm in my zone of genius, which is really the education speaking aspect. And they just assign those onto my Asana, uh, which we'll talk about here in a second. So I know what's due, what's expected of me. And again, the whole team knows what we're trying to achieve. Now we do company meetings each month and we'll check in on where we are with those goals. And so if we're not on track, there are separate meetings to say, Hey, you know, we're down or what can we do? This isn't converting or this worked really well. How do we replicate this? You know, things like that. You're, ch- you're constantly checking in on that what and why 
very similar to the episode I did with Patricia Norens, um, which I think was episode five or six. And, uh, you know, we talked about breaking your goals into quarters versus looking at a whole year because the whole year goes by and all of a sudden September, October, and you're like, well, where are we? Are we on track? And you got a lot of making up to do if you're not on track. So that's where we do check in on these monthly and to have those conversations. And look, I'm going to be super honest with you. We're not perfect at this. You know, it's, it, it takes some adjustment for us all to be like, okay, this is our North Star. This is our roadmap of where we're going. We need to pay attention to these and making sure that we're hitting them. And if we're not, we're adjusting, we're pivoting, we're tracking, we're tweaking, right? So, um, but I have faith. I know we will get there. There's just been a few bumps in the road for us and some hiccups like, any company. Um, but this has been so nice without it. We would kind of be like, okay, how many members do we want this year? What do we want to achieve this year? What are we doing? We just kind of all go along with our lives. And I think that's where a lot of businesses can fail because you're not setting that North start. You're not pushing yourself further and seeing that vision to go to the next level. You're just kind of doing what you always did. And if you do that, often people race by you right? And that's where we can stagnate and and flatten or decline. And so that what and why, who and how, what and why is important to grow, who and how is important to get it done and saving the owner some time as well, have the right people get it done. Integrator should help you with the the who and how. Um, And episode four of Crystal and Corked, I did talk a little bit more about what I mean about an integrator. So if you haven't caught that one, it's definitely a fan fave episode. Go check that one out next. Um, okay. So then the next, uh, now the next one is, is a tool. Um, Asana.com is an amazing app and I, I use the mobile app as well as I have it on my computer. It's a project management software. It has a calendar built in with color coordinating tasks that you can add. So you can have different um, promotions and launches. Um, or different products or however you want to categorize your calendar. We also have like vacation and personal time in there, speaking, events, launches, promotions. So we, our blog, we have all of those things in there that we can categorize and it all gets assigned to somebody within that one project. There might be several tasks that need to get done. And so that is where Pauline can manage all of that and use her team to help manage their teams and their people or themselves and get all of those tasks on Asana with due dates. And on there, you can have comments and attach docs and just make sure everybody has ultimate clarity to know what they are doing. So that tool runs my life. Asana, I even block it for all personal things too. We've got family friends coming over for dinner tomorrow. So that is on my Asana. Um, you know, even Dustin is going to be on a TV show, a game show called Common knowledge hosted by Joey Fratone from InSync. Um, it's going to be live March 25th. So you can Google it, check it out. This, I think episode's going to come out after that, but I even put that on my calendar so I don't forget to watch it. You know, like that we can just be running around like crazy people because we have so many things we need to get done and there's no method to the madness. You're just trying to remember the stuff that you have to do. And that's often when balls get dropped. So for me, if it's not written down, it does not exist. It just doesn't exist in my world. So that's why I love having this as a mobile app too, because if I'm talking to someone right then and there, I just put it on my Asana. Um, so that has been a really great tool. And um, the other tool I want to say too, it's almost going back a little bit from the who and how, something that I picked up from Strategic Coach, a coaching program I'm in, um, which also teaches the who and how, is what's called an impact filter. And this impact filter is kind of like a project brief. So we'll we'll do these impact filters to de- to determine should we do a project? Like, is this worth our time? What's the best case scenario, worst case scenario? And then if we decide to move forward from that impact filter, which is just, a, it's just a tool to help us think about the project, which I think is really important to do. Cause sometimes we'll be like, I have this idea. And then we just start doing it. And then you create chaos. And then it takes you off course of what you were trying to do. And you're not following that North star, you know, the what and why's that you originally set out to do. So having a tool to kind of just ask questions, making sure what's expected, who's doing what. If you decide, yes, it's go, 
it's a go. We're going to do this. Then my team fills out a project brief. This project brief is just basically like the details of the project. It has in there that best case scenario, worst case scenario. And then who's doing what? Kind of just a project management tool. We have deadlines in there. And then we go into a kickoff meeting to say, okay, here's the brief. Here's what we're doing. Expectations. Any questions? Cool. The team goes and then that's where they'll go and assign things on Asana. Okay. Also, not something, the hardest part for us to be so transparent with, um, adapting this into our schedules is just doing it. We get so caught up in doing the same thing, like the way that it, we've always done it. And I can't tell you how many times I've said this this year to my team, but I have said, just because we've done it that way in the past doesn't mean we have to do it that way in the future. I, I'm encouraging some thinking different, some new ideas, some new strategies to really tighten everything up and be as efficient and lean and mean as possible. And so our hardest part has just been remembering to do the impact filter and then the brief. When we do that, there's, it's smooth. It's smooth sailing. It's a lot easier and there's less communication, miscommunication because that stuff. When you forget stuff, you're backpedaling, you're like not thinking ahead, you messed up, that creates more chaos and things that you have to deal with, which takes time. And then we're, so we're less productive and we're spending more time. Okay. Next thing is then accountability. All right. So I've got my what and why, my who and how, my integrator with the impact filter and project brief, Asana for both personal and business. And then my accountability, um, two accountability meetings that I do that are really important to keeping, um, a pulse on goals and the, the roadmap is one, my quarterly accountability meeting with Patricia, my mentor who is on the show. Um, we do this to help each other. So we share our quarterly goals and then we have our check-in meetings to make sure, okay, where are you with that? What's going on? Um, and do we need to adjust? Okay. What's going on for the next quarter? Just by having that meeting makes me remember my quarterly goals because I don't know if anybody can relate to this. If you can relate to me here, sometimes I set a goal and I forget about it. And I'm like, and they'll be like, a month later or three months later or six months later, I'm like, Oh yeah, I'll find a piece of paper or something on drive. And I'm like, Oh yeah, I totally had that goal. And I did nothing to try to achieve it. I was like, I had this day where I was like feeling great and had all this energy and was like visualizing the future and wrote down a goal. And then I moved on with my life. And so when I have this accountability partner and we send each other our goals and we check in and we have this meeting, it forces me, I can't show up to that meeting without an update. So it forces me to keep looking at those goals and seeing where we're at. And then I can go to that meeting and say, here's where we are. Gosh, here's what we need to do. That really didn't work. So we're trying to do this. This was awesome. So, you know, we're doing this. So Highly recommend those accountability meetings. That can be with a mentor. It could also be with somebody on your team. My my next um, super important accountability meeting is with Pauline. Every Tuesday morning at 8.30 for probably the past five years, we have met. That meeting is non-negotiable. You cannot move it unless we have like a very important webinar or one of us are traveling or sick. Otherwise, we show up at 8.30 And we have our accountability meeting. We have the same agenda that we cover. We share good news. It's very similar to the level 10 meeting from EOS, which I talked about in episode four. Um, and we, we just talk about good news. We've got a scorecard where we go through all of our numbers. Um, as far as like, you know, how many clients and retention and revenue and net profitability. And then we talk about, we each have our own. Well, then we go into like the revenue goals. Where are we? Where are we for the year? Where are we for the quarter? Where are we for the month? And then we go into um, if there's any issues that we need to address. And then each of us have our own agendas. What I love about that that meeting is it keeps us every week looking at our numbers, you know, so you don't like set it and forget it. And it helps us address issues weekly if we have stuff going on versus letting stuff linger. And it allows us to, um, 
ha- have a place where if something comes up midweek and I'm like, oh, I really need to talk to Pauline about this, or I have a really great idea, or why did this happen this way? I don't need to send an email to her and clog up her email inbox. I can just put it on the level 10 agenda. If it can wait a couple days until Tuesday at 830, I just put it on the agenda. And then we talk about it then because that's another area where it's harder to be productive and have more time if you're constantly answering emails. And that can be like a whole nother episode. I just have this dream of only checking email once a week. It would be so cool if I, if I do that. And if it works, I will share on this, on the show. Um, but it really just prevents her from like getting that email and then the back and the forth. And we could just talk about it real quick and then we're done. Another thing I try to do is if something can be solved right now, like if it's just going to take a couple of minutes, instead of like emailing it to, it, to schedule something or put on my Asana to schedule something. I'm like, no, I'm not going to schedule myself to schedule something. I'm just going to schedule the thing right now. Like if it could take me five or 10 minutes, I can knock it out real quick versus coming back to it. Then I try to do that. And that's kind of, you have to train your mind to think that way to be like, can I just do this real fast? Or, you know, do I need more time? Um, I read something a few years ago that said it takes seven to 10 minutes. I might get this wrong because part of me wants to say 20 minutes. Um, but we'll just say that it takes seven to 10 minutes roughly to, um, if you are working on a task and you get pulled away from the task, the phone rings, you have a text message, email dings, someone comes into your office. Um, it takes you seven to 10 minutes to get refocused back on that task, to get back into where you were. So there can be a lot of time wasted in that. Oh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, oh, my phone just lit up. Oh, I'm going to answer that. Okay, wait, what was I doing? Seven minutes you've lost. So we just really want to also time block. And that is my next thing that I do because um, I will time block on a sauna, but you have to be very strategic and productive in those in that period of time. So if I have two hours to do three or four recordings, my phone is off. It's on airplane mode. I'm not seeing it. I'm letting Dustin know, hey, I'm doing this. Do not bother me. I do not have email up. My calendar is clear. I am focused. Nothing is taking me off of doing this. Unless like somebody came up to my door and wouldn't stop ringing the doorbell and knocking and, or the dogs were freaking out, then, you know, that stuff can happen, but I am taking care of anything that I can control, right? So I can really focus and knock stuff out. That time blocking, I can't speak enough of. I think that people will, they have the best intentions and then it's time and they're like, Ooh, but I could really use this two hours to catch up on email. And so they'll do that instead but you're really setting yourself behind. If you can block and get ahead on these projects, things that help you get closer to achieving your goals, you know, that really going to help from that what and why, that's really going to be worth your time not getting caught up on emails. So that's a, that's a definite critical thing for me. And the final thing is new. Um, I am in this program called UHPW. It stands for Unleash Her Power Within. It is taught by Carissa Kutcher. They call her KK. Um, but it's a Tony Robbins thing essentially because I go to Unleash Her Power Within and then, um, my little notebook here. And then I'll go to Unleash Your Power Within or Unleash The Power Within with Tony Robbins. And so what she has taught us, what Chris has taught us in this eight week program is janning, J-A-N-N-I-N-G, weekly janning. And so this has been really cool. I've, I've only just the past couple of weeks been really focusing on this and it has really helped increase my productivity, like not wasting time doing stupid stuff and really being on track. So the first part of Janning is you just put down all the tasks and to do's that you have to do. I'm showing this in the video, but for my audio people, it's really just you're writing down a list of all the stuff that you need to do this week. Um, you know, there's no format to this. So you are just basically getting them out of your head and onto paper. What things do I need to get done this week? Then the next part of this, and I actually filled this out second. So we'll actually go over to here. The, the next part, there is like this calendar where you put in, you know, what am I going to do all week long 
time, like you put it all on your calendar. Then the next part is you are um, scripting. You are, and I'm just going to read this exactly how it is. Scripting is a technique used in manifestation where a person journals as if their dreams have already happened. Most successful people do this unconsciously. So what you do is you block 10 or 20 minutes. I set a timer on my phone for 10 minutes. And I just, what you do is it says, write through your experience of this week as if it had already happened. And it was magnificent. As you're writing, focus on feeling whatever emotion you desire to feel, gratitude, excitement, etc., and enjoy the process. No need to be realistic. Whatever your mind creates is perfect. You are you once complete. Add anything new that came up with um, to your schedule. It's uh, however that serves for your schedule. So you are basically like, okay, Saturday night. And this is what happened. I had the most epic week and you just go there as if it all happened and how you felt. And you just like get into that. I love doing that stuff. It's so fun to feel that way and visualize that. And I really feel like our visions are powerful. I believe in manifesting. I've got some cool stories about that that I'll probably share on future episodes. So that's what I do. I, it's like this 10 minute of just like how the best week ever, how could that look? And then I'll go back over to the schedule and I will time block stuff that's going on and I'll look at my Asana and put it in. Now, look. I don't have to use this written schedule because I do have a sauna, but I use it with a sauna, maybe even just the next month or two to kind of train myself because this format I'm seeing on one page and I'm able to be like, is this doable? Do I see enough space in here for the certain things I need? Am I able to get done to really have this magnificent week? Do I need help with anything? So I like seeing it visually and then using a sauna too. After a while, I'm probably not going to use this printed. I'll just use Asana for that. But um, And then the last piece of Janning is you future proof. And this is critical. So you take a look at your schedule for the week along with the results and emotions you desire to create. Then ask a few questions. What must I do to make sure these tasks, activities go exceptionally well? What could interrupt my success? How can I anticipate those obstacles? What can I do to solve um, for them ahead of time? And then, so you write all this stuff down, which I love. So if I needed to like get three podcast episodes recorded, um, something that could interrupt me is possibly Dustin being here and maybe he was going to have friends over or something and I needed the house to myself, you know? So I need to make sure I'm checking in with him ahead of time. Hey, I'm doing this on these days. So, you know, go to your office then so I can really focus. Um, you know, so really looking at what could fuck up my schedule and do everything you can to prevent that. And that might require you to modify your calendar. You might then need to actually give yourself a little bit more time for something or add in something else you need to do to ensure this gets done. So future proofing, is that what it's called? Future casting? Yeah. Future proof big fan of has really helped me and I'm loving this whole Janning experience. So real quick, Janning weekly to do's. Then you share. Um, then I go into scripting. This is the best week I could ever have possible. Then future proof. What could fuck this up? Deal with those and then go to your calendar and, and structure your week to have that magnificent, excellent, productive, awesome, amazing week that you just visualized. So that's what I do to stay productive, to get shit done, to help me meet my goals all while still having time and space in my calendar for whatever I want. If it's just to rest, if it's to vacation, if it's to have fun, or if it's to work, to think, to read, to learn, listen to podcasts, do whatever it is that I want to do. Um, I hope you found this helpful. If there's something that you do that you're like, oh man, without this, this process, this tool... I would waste so much time or I don't know how I'd stay sane or I wouldn't be as productive. Please share it with me. Send an email, cheers at crystalandcork.com or share in a DM on Instagram. Those are the two best ways. And um, that is hopefully some, some helpful tips for you to save some more time and make you more productive. If you are liking the show, 
And if you haven't left a review yet, please do so. It means the world. It is my fuel to keep going. I love reading people's comments about this show. Seriously, it means so much to me. So thank you for being here and I'll see you on the next CU. Thank you so much for listening. Are you on Instagram? I'd love to see pictures of you listening to the show, a screenshot of your favorite episode and or your favorite wines. Share them with me. Just follow and tag at Crystal Uncorked. I can't wait to see you there. All right. I'll see you on the next CU.